All right, so everybody knows what kind of crop we had. I, I don't know what the best adjective is for it. Phenomenal, uh, warehouse buster, but you know, ended up with a big, big tidal wave of peanuts uh, this year on the 2012 crop. And so um, USDA updated their numbers Friday. Uh, and so the crop that's been getting big got bigger Friday. Uh, they, they raised the yield um, on 1.636 planted acres to 4,192 pounds per acre for the U.S. Uh, so over two ton crop for the U.S. And uh, that <clears throat> certainly blows the last record out of the water of 3,400, 2,600 pounds in 2008. And uh, so, um, as you'll see in a couple other slides, all the states, you know, basically had record yields. And uh, Georgia was the reason that the U.S. is above two tons. <laughs> I mean, that's plain and simple. I mean, 4,550 pounds. I, there's no way I thought we could do that, uh, but <clears throat> we had that kind of year. I mean, everything fell together, and uh, actually the previous record crop turned out to be 2011. Back in September, uh, the, the numbers were updated, and, and uh, 2011 crop uh, was in Georgia was 3,652 pounds per acre. So um, the high prices of, of 2011 crop though has slowed down um, peanut use and uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that but when I say the crop that kept getting bigger back in March uh, the end, end the, pro the, the planting intentions were 1.422 million acres and Georgia was at 570,000 acres now I, I think it I figured that was too low and, and everybody else, but I didn't know that, didn't think we would probably get that high. Um, the June acreage report had Georgia at 710 and the final number 735,000 acres planted. And uh, Alabama's number two state followed closely by Florida. Uh, so the Southeast, you know, basically planted more acres in the Southeast last year than the whole acres in the U.S. the previous year. And so, you know, the southeast certainly is going to drive the U.S. peanut production now. Uh, one state that's not in here is Arkansas uh, in terms of, and, uh, so there's acres, I guess Arkansas may become a peanut state next year. We may see them in the, uh, in the official estimates because uh, uh, they are in the tonnage report. And uh, so when you look at what maybe expected yield would have been for last last year's crop before we got into the year you know I was 3450 pound would be your trend line yield what maybe you would expect if you're just going back to 1990 and looking at yields and and, and just do a linear trend and so you can tell you know we're way above what what the market or industry would have thought would have happened so Here's what happened to other states, uh, Alabama at two tons, Florida almost two tons, record yield. You know, these were the records the previous year, Georgia last year's record, and, it, and then broken this year. Mississippi, they jumped right up in the in Friday's report up to 4,400 pounds. North Carolina ended up being a record, Oklahoma. The only states that weren't a record was Texas and New Mexico, and South Carolina was 100 pounds short of their record of 2008. and so. You know, basically, just like I said, phenomenal yields this past year, uh, and basically brought us up to large record production um, in the, in terms of total production of peanuts. So you can see what our issue is going into 2013 crop. We've got a lot of peanuts added to the uh, to the supplies to the pipeline, you'd say. And, and you can see that difference there. Well, that's, that's going to push our ending stocks up from a, a low of 502,000 tons last uh, end of July to over 1,300 uh, or 1.3 million tons uh, projected at the end of this July in 2013. So we got a lot of peanuts to, to move. And 
USDA right now is projecting, you know, an increase in, in total use and be a, to a record record increase, you know. <laughs> Last time we saw, I, I guess, a real big year like that production-wise was 2008 and in 1991. And 1991 was before me and a lot of y'all can... Uh, in here can have a better explanation of what happened in 91, but uh, um, with this year, um, we're going to have to reduce production uh, just to keep stocks from, uh, you know, staying as high as they are going into next year. So <clears throat> we do expect consumption to go up because of the big crop. And USDA's numbers, um, their, their forecast, it's projecting food use up by 7%. And uh, that's not, I don't know that we're seeing that increase yet, but that's the, that's the expectation. Exports are projected up 50%, the highest level of exports, I guess is number of pounds exported since 1995. And there's been mention of interest from China. And there may, and, and wanting to buy peanuts this year. So, uh, I don't know if that's what triggered uh, some of the contracts to be offered uh, at, at $30 a ton, but if the Chinese come in, uh, that will be a good timing to maybe take off a couple of hundred thousand tons uh, of that supply. And uh, crush is up just because of the large crop, and total use, would, again, would be a record at 2.6 million tons. However, shelled edible use right now is not show, showing that at least through through November. But I may I expect that to pick up, I think everybody does, and, and start to be reflected in, in shelled use for for the candy, peanut butter, and snacks. I'll tell you, yesterday Mars was here uh, during some training with the agents, and I asked Mars, are they seeing an increase? And they said yes, for, for M&Ms and Snickers, they've been seeing an increase, and they've actually built a new plant. They're building a new plant in, uh, Kansas, I believe. Uh, anyway, they said two manufacturer M&Ms and Snickers, so they expect expect it to go up. Maybe one of the reasons we haven't seen that in stocks and processing is because cold storage stocks got down way low with the short crop in September, so you can see it's jumped back up. There may not that may reflect lower use just because there weren't as many peanuts to use use yet at the end of the year. Um, but in trying to project out this coming season, 2013, um, and hopefully you can see those numbers in the back, but I'll, I'll, I'll try to explain. The first three columns are the USDA supply and demand balance sheet for, uh, for peanuts. And you can see we st starting out this marketing year, the 2012 crop that's marketed through July of 2013. Um, Starting out with 500,000 tons carryover, may have been less than that, but produced 3.37 million ton crop, and so they end up with about 3.9 million tons of supply. And so last year, use was total use was down because of the short crop, and they're projecting almost 2.6 million tons uh, increase, and that would leave us at the 1.32, basically. Uh, ending stocks, so, you know, almost uh, one and a half percent, I mean, 150 percent, more than 150 percent increase in, in uh, carryover stock. So what about 2013? Uh, I, I, I used, a, let's say acres go down to 1.25 million, and we use a trend line yield of 3520 pounds per acre. Uh, that'd be a 2.2 million crop. And in the past, a 2.2 million crop would basically be equal with what we've been total consumption. But if we push consumption up to 2.6, and that would, that would draw down stocks a little, by about 300,000 uh, tons. And the reason I didn't, I didn't do the uh, 2.6 is I figure consumption uh, exports and crush would come down some. Uh, this, this next marketing year with a smaller crop. And so 
you know, that might be the situation that these yields in, in acres, let's say acres go down to 1.1 million. That's basically where we were in 2011 and, and 2009. 2009 was the lowest acres since 1915. And so that'd be about uh, just under 2 million ton production. And that would really draw us down in terms of total uh, carryover ending stocks back to 800,000 tons. So, you know, if, we, if that happened with that kind of yield, we'd be in one year's time pretty close back to, to $500 a $500 ton peanuts uh, or better. <coughs> However, with the kind of yields we've seen, and I'm just not going to discount 06Gs anymore, uh, and, and the, some of the new, new lines that are out there, um, Let's say it's 3650 uh, in terms of average yield, and that would that would uh, bump us up another 100,000 tons uh, in the, on 1.25 million acres, and get us up another 70, 75,000 tons on 1.1 million <coughs> acres. So, you know, are these is this where we're going to be at? Uh, I think everybody knows acres are going to be down. Uh, just how low is it going to go is certainly going to depend on what contracts do, uh, what, what prices are offered. Um, but those are just some scenarios anyway to, to think about. Contracts, uh, of course, the $30 above loan rate uh, per ton plus the uh, giving back the shrink has, has been offered. At least that's the most common. Uh, that I've heard of, <clears throat> and the shrink um, at three and a half percent, it can be different from sheller to sheller. But uh, what's been mentioned out there, and, and on some of the tariff sheets I've seen, is three and a half percent, or twelve point twelve dollars and forty three cents per ton, roughly at base grade. Um, that'd be three eighty five, and, and because of adding the, the shrink back, so. Uh, is that a good price? Kind of depends on where shelled prices are. Uh, I think with the large crop, that's probably better than most folks thought would come out at first. Um, and where is it going to go? Um, when I talk to to broker, a couple of brokers, and and where the market is, about 45 cents per pound is where the market was last week on on shelled mediums. Even though they didn't say there was a lot of sales going on, at least at that time that that there weren't a lot of major buyers yet. I think that may be changing here pretty quick if it's not already happening. Um, because the 2012 crop, I think before we ended up with the big big yields, the general thought was that maybe 50 to 60 percent of the crop was contracted, uh, which is a little higher than I thought it might be, but uh, with the amount of tons that was produced, and I don't know that we're 50 percent, but let's say it's 50 percent, so that'd be six months worth of, of peanuts. Um, if, they, if they start taking delivery early on the contracts they contracted, you know, on that first 50 percent, move all those contracts up, then it might be March when they start really needing, or March, April, when they needing peanuts that aren't contracted. And so I think uh, that's part of why we started seeing these contract offers is starting trying to sell crop for that next uh, six months of, of deliveries. And, um, you know, with jumbos at 46, maybe even 47 cents a pound, you work it backwards at 45, um, using some assumptions on uh, shell out rate and holes percentage and coal rate, uh, it'd be about a 415 a ton peanut. Um, now that doesn't say that that's what the, the sheller's actually getting. That's just kind of trying to estimate what that price would be if you converted it back to the farmer stock ton. Uh, so you know there might be ten to twenty dollars potential out there because they they lowered that I'm sure to account for the risk that they hadn't sold those peanuts yet. Uh, so there might be potential if you want to hold them out, but you're probably going to have to hold your peanuts for the duration of the loan. You got, you know, the nine-month period from whenever the loan came out, or you took, you put the peanuts in the loan. So, you know, risk and shrink, uh, and and all that 
means you probably would have to hold them out the full amount of the loan uh, period. So, you know, it, with where things are now, um, the expectation is that peanuts probably aren't going, that, 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 that price right now is about where the market is and probably will stay there for a while in terms of price for shelled peanuts. Uh, I think the manufacturers are trying to get them pushed lower, but if there really is ch Chinese interest, that's probably where the market's going to be for a while, is, is around 45 cents a pound. I, that's my guess, anyway. If you go back and look, this is a, I show you, you remember that 2008 was, was one of the big, big production years. And that pushed prices uh, and shelled prices down to the 40 cent and then back up around 45. 40, the high 40s, and we had 375 to 400 dollar a ton peanuts back then, and so that's kind of a, a looking at where we are today. That kind of fits with what the market's doing right now, and then as we got later in the year, you know, as the new crop comes, we actually hit a bull run with corn and soybean, with cotton, I should say, and that helped bring peanut prices back up uh, at that time as well as. Uh, the supply getting back down in 2010 and 11. And so I kind of feel like this year is, is similar to 2009 uh, when you look at prices and, and what our acreage might look like. So, you know, what will uh, shellers and manufacturers look at? You know, I, I figure they're going to try to get them down to 1.2 or, or what price it would to, to at least have. 1.1, 1.2 million acres. Um, with the amount of peanuts out there, you know, will will farmers be willing to forfeit in the loan, hold them, uh, if the, if you don't get a price later on? It, are there will peanuts go into the loan? I think uh, exports will increase with the uh, with the lower prices and the quality, because we got got a, a excellent quality crop, so it makes it easier to export. And, uh, you know, with the Chinese in there, that's, that certainly would help uh, in our export side. So it really is a guess, but, you know, we might see $400 in the beginning on the first contracts. I imagine contracts will come out as we've been seeing the last couple of years. You know, they'll offer for a little while on a certain amount of tons and then see what the reaction is from growers. Uh, but it looks like, you know, we got the big crop, and we, we might be headed back to the pattern of where a better price, you know, price might be better at harvest depending on how the, the growing season goes. What about next year in terms of peanuts related to other crops? Um, this is just a summary uh, of the budgets and plugging in some, some uh, prices right now. Had 380 in there, but let's say we average $400 a ton on peanuts. Even at $400 a ton and 4,500 pound irrigated yield, um, income above variable cost is still less than soybeans at, at $12, 60 bushel yield, 1,200 pound cotton at 75 cent, and 200 bushel corn at $6. And you can see corn is looking the best, followed by soybeans and cotton. And if you add, if you subtract uh, 185 land rent, and uh, I know land rent's going to vary by region and region. That's just I just picked a number. Uh, that's not UGA saying that's what land rent is out there. Uh, <laughs> I just picked a number. Um, and but just to reflect, you know what's left over if you do charge a land rent. Uh, so that's what you got left there to pay fixed cost. Uh, you know your machinery payment and pay yourself uh, in terms of per acre so you know at, even at prices will have to be higher than that I think to get more interest in peanuts you know planting peanuts this year and on dry land 700 pound cotton and 3200 pound peanuts and 30 bushel beans at 75 cent 12 dollars and six dollars you know it's the same same relationship um, Although I caution corn, you know, we got what, 70, this year maybe 75% of the crop was irrigated, you know. 
The only reason we have a dry land budget is for North Georgia and some of the further north areas that aren't irrigated. Uh, that's, that's pretty risky uh, to, to grow dry land corn down here. <laughs> so that's kind of a, a snapshot anyway. No risk, risk associated in there. One thing, and Judd, you're, you're here, and you asked me this last week about the 500, about the crop insurance price. Will that encourage maybe some, some dry land peanuts? It might. Uh, $500 is the, is the projected price on peanuts. Uh, they, they came out with $500 a ton uh, for the insurance price. And so let's say you got 3,000 pound APH yield. Um, that would be $750 an acre, uh, dollars per acre at $500 a ton and depending on what coverage level, you know, 488 at 65% coverage, 525 at 70%. And uh, 638 at 85%. And if you throw in variable cost here, uh, and, and again, this is non irrigated. I didn't do the irrigated scenario. Um, at, at 488, um, that covers 86% of your variable cost uh, without land rent, 92% at 70% coverage. And at, if, you, if you buy up as high as you can go, that's 112 percent. If you add a $75 per acre land rent on non-irrigated, again, I, I picked the number, uh, that, would, that would add that to your variable cost here, then you're looking at about three quarters of your cost you know, covered by insurance, uh, 80 percent at 70 percent coverage and almost 100 at 85 percent. What would it take to trigger? Well, you're going to have to hit down to 1950 at 65 percent to even trigger. Uh, 2,100 pounds on on 70 percent coverage and 2,550 on 85 percent. And these would be the these are the premiums when when I went online at RMA. RMA's got a cost estimator, or you can call a, a insurance agent and get it from them. Uh, <clears throat> I think I did Worth County, but um, 36 dollars. Uh, Per acre premium on on the 65 percent, 42 dollars on the 70, and 102 on the 85 percent. Basically, you, the the subsidy at, at above 70 percent is a lot less, and so that's why you see such a high premium on the 85 percent coverage. Uh, some of y'all may not be able to see that at the bottom, I, but a couple of ways to look at that premium: how much of that premium covers your production cost. I mean, what percent of it is your production cost? About 6% to 7%, that's normal. Somewhere between 5 to 7% is usually what they come out with. Depends on the year. When prices are high, um, it'll be a little higher. When prices are low, it'll be down around 5%. But um, as far as the dollars that are covered, about $13.5 per dollar premium spent on the 65 percent, 12 and a half on the 70 and 625 on the 85. So the subsidies are the highest right here around 65 to 70 and that's what most agents will, will tell you to buy um, because that's usually your best deal as far as getting subsidized premiums. Um, but <coughs> you know when you start looking at being able to cover your cost you know that may that may come into play like like was suggested on, on this coming year on, on dry land acres. Because I would think most of the dry land acres would shift uh, this coming year out of peanuts um, and into something like soybeans or, or uh, cotton. Some of the cotton acres will get probably end up in corn. Uh, that's about a 30 percent increase in corn. Um, a drop down to 470 on peanuts. I've already been told I'm too high, uh, but uh, that's just my guess right now. You know, look, 2009 we went at 420 on on corn, and uh, dropped down to 510 on peanuts and 470 on soybeans. That was that was when corn and soybean prices were high, and uh, we're in a, a year again where corn and soybean prices are high relative to peanuts. And, and cotton to a degree. And so whether these numbers are right, 
Um, I think the direction is right. We're going to see more corn and, and soybeans, along with the more wheat that's out there. I mean, we could just we could stay at 1.29 million acres in cotton. We may not lose any cotton acres uh, this year. I wouldn't be surprised. But Don said go ahead and lower it since I I increased soybeans by that much and 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 corn. So that's a. Uh, that kind of covers what I had. Uh, any any questions, y'all? Y'all want to throw it throw out there? Uh, some of y'all came in late. Um, there's a survey on the table for farmers on uh, crop savings accounts. If you would uh, take one of those, it'd be glad for you to get it. Uh, Well, if there's no questions, I appreciate uh, y'all's attention, and uh, hopefully this year we'll have the kind of yields, no matter what kind of acres we end up. Uh, hope it's a good year for you. I'll be around too later on if you wanna wanna talk on, on questions. So.